Hello there guys, uh, Kirk and Jason here with Kirk Giordano Plastering. Today what we're going to show you guys is uh, how to do two coats of lime finish in this uh, bathroom here. We got the shower, we got the walls, we got closet space, we got a lot of stuff going on. We did the base coat a couple days ago and that base coat, um, you can, we used a uh, flex bond. I keep calling it thin set but there is a difference. Anyway, what we're, we've done the base coat now. Uh, so today we're going to go ahead and have the fun of doing the finish coat. And this finish coat is similar to any X, well, it's similar to Santa Barbara Smooth Mission finish outside. I prefer two coats back to back, not one, because if you do one and you're troweling it, sometimes that you can over trowel that material, and what that does it brings the lime to the surface and it separates from the base coat. And by the way, guys, I like doing the base coat a day before and doing the finish coat the, the next day because I want the base coat cured. And folks disagree with me, I say fine, but I like to do it my way. If we do the base coat and the finish coat the same day as some folks recommend, I have a hard enough time troweling it two coats on and making it adhere. We don't want to worry about a base coat. So that's just my way. I've been doing this for years. I like that method. So what we're going to do today is we're going to start at the top. It's just a good old fashioned common sense. Start at the top. We're going to do the skylight. We're going to do the ceiling. I'm actually going to do this wall too because I'm going to show you how we do this wall here. But if I do this wall, hopefully the color will be down, um, in uh, set because the color cures. It's going to be a light blue. It's not this dark blue. It's kind of Moroccan style uh, for that. Last of all, I'll say that this, uh, this particular material is 100% lime. I've used 10 different types of um, shower finishes. This one is 100% lime. And the fellow who did the research spent days on Google as far as to find the particular product. I have applied this product before, and I know what I'm doing with it, and I know how I like it done. So <clears throat> we're going to show you how I like to do it, and we'll go from there. And one other tip, guys. Um, well. It's not a, a very cheap product. It's pretty expensive. The product itself, just for this, say, uh, the base coat and the finish coat, as well as the pigments, about 1300 bucks for this small bathroom here. And that's not to mention the, the cost of the Flex Bond, the Wonder Board, the, all the boards he used, and all the rest of that stuff. But first, before we do that, what I always like to do is scrape everything. I come, I scrape all the walls, I scrape the floors here. I got, I got tile here, so we scrape everything. We're going to get rid of all this, and we're going to re, re uh, put paper. What I like to do, guys, is brand new buckets, clean the tools. We use brand new brushes, and for our corners, my $40 brushes aren't that good. I use the $2 brush, and we do each wall individually. This little bitty brush right here leaves it real smooth. We're going to do wall to wall to wall. I'm not going to try to knock out this whole bathroom and uh, polish it with with this here. Anyway guys, we got a lot of work to do today just before we even get started with the material. So we are going to go ahead, clean up this mess, scrape all the walls down. One grain of sand guys will lose us about 10 minutes. A thimble full will lose us an hour. So we want to scrape everything, get this out, retape it and get busy. We'll show you when we get to that point. Okay guys, real quick, I'll show you the product we're using. Um, Eco Stucco. There's some of the colors that come along with this material. Beautiful assortment of colors. We did a sample for the fella. Um, this is the, um, it's a light blue, and he said, Kirk, I want it darker. I said, dark as you want it, you can, you, we can apply up to four pigmentations per box. So he chose four. I have no idea what color this is gonna come out, but it's gonna be probably, he wants it uh, dark. So we just do what we're told, we're applicators. Here's where we're going with this. We've already troweled the whole wall. We took green sponge floats and got off every clinker. We've taken trowels and cleaned all this. And now we're, we're still not done, but we're about to put tape an eighth of an inch from here because we have the, the finish that's going to go on here. So we scraped this all down. Why didn't we scrape it when the day we did this? Because if we pulled that out, this was still a little moist and all the little clinkers would stick. One clinker 
one clinker, one grain of sand, our trowel will have mud on it. And if we touch it, our trowel will pull the clinker up and just drag it along the wall. I've had that happen about 50 to 100 times. It's no fun. It will add an extra three hours to this. So it's better just to take your time, clean everything, and we're still going to clean all this out right here. We want this just perfect. Well, then we're going to vacuum it. Yeah, that saves a lot of time, guys. Okay, guys, I'm going to show you this wall in its entirety. I just We put a first coat right here already. Look how blue that is. Four bags of pigment. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting a second coat over the first coat. And man, this is going to be blue. But that's, that's what we're looking for. Now Jay just mixed this. And of course, when Jay's not mixing, guess what he's doing? He's applying the mud with me. Okay, so here's a little bitty trial this time. But okay, here we go. Coming up. All the way to the top. Beauty about this different color is the contrast. This contrast is really cool. It really shows you how we're applying it. Okay, here. And this is uh Jay got this mix to consistency of butter, whipped cream. That's what I want. Here, I just want to go right to the top. Just like that. Okay, and this is, this is the first coat. And the idea is, guys, we want to put this on somewhat gently. We don't want to over trial this material. We over trial it and it has a tendency to weaken its bond. Oh, we don't want that. No, we want it bond very well. So come up here. And this, again, first coat. Let's see here. corners, square everything off, get my inner corner in here, square it off, make it pretty, any, any holidays just go right back over it, you're not going to hurt anything, okay, get this guy in here, and this is just, again, this is the first coat, you can get your material the consistency like this, guys. It's really nice to work with. If it's too stiff, well, then you can't put it on. If it's too thin, then it's running all over the place. You don't want it running off of your hawk. And by the time we're done with this wall here, it'll be time to um, buff out the ceiling the skylight, the other wall here. I'll show you that when I get to it. And what I'm doing is I'm taking it coming this way. I don't want to go this way, otherwise I'll pull this out. I already got two coats in here. If I pull this way, it'll yank that right off right now because it's still too soft. Little tips, guys. Here, we're taking down. You see that? Taking it down. Why? Because if I pull it up, I will blow this top out. Same side, same thing here. I'm taking it, pulling it, going away from it. I don't want to go here. I blow it out. So, okay, like so. And we just keep going, just like that. Here we go. One more hawk right here, that'll give me the second coat. You know guys, this, this stuff here, you can go upside down, it's, it's sticky stuff. Sticky stuff, you gotta mix just like that, easy to work with. You know, 
get out my own way. Okay. And what this is doing, guys, it's giving me the first coat. And these are, this wall is getting pretty hot. Uh, it's getting later in the day. I can feel the heat coming in here, hot outside, just perfect. If it were, again, if it was a big wall, I would mist it first. We have little water missiles. You pump them up and you just spray it on there, but we don't need to do that here. The day I can't do a little wall like this, I need to hand in my tools. Okay, a little bit more, then I'll start my second coat. All right. Now what I'll do guys, is I'll take my little bitty throw away brush. I have some brushes in the truck that are $40, $50 brushes. This is a $2 brush. And all I'll do is I'll come in here and I'll finish this off. I want these corners inner and outer strong. And that requires a little bit of water. A little bit of water. And then you have some tight, strong corners. And this is even prior to the next coat. Okay, guys. Finish this little piece here though. Show you how we do that second coat. And then we're almost there, guys. I'll show you how we buff it. Okay, guys. Here we go. Second coat. And yeah, guys, this is going to lighten up quite a bit. Even the owner, he wanted it dark. He looked at it and said, oh, shit. So, that's way dark. I said, don't worry, man. It'll lighten up. Okay, second coat. Now you look at this and say, how are you going to know if you're putting the second coat on what areas you miss? Just watch the wall, common sense. And, and it does take a bit of practice, guys. Take it here and come up. We'll start from the bottom, come up, come back down on it. Same thing, the whole, whole wall, just like that. Start from here. Come sideways, get your corners, okay. If I'm already down here, I'll take it to the top of this window. Any of you guys that do tape and mud, if you're real good, you can do this. It's, it's harder actually to do smooth finish with taping mud than what I'm doing right here. So this is well beyond the means of any of you drywallers. You, you guys can apply this. It's what you need to, what takes real practice or time in is to know when you got to start buffing it, when to put your second coat on, when the walls are ready, how much troweling is necessary before you start over troweling. And we don't want to lift this. We want that bond as strong as possible. The last thing we want to do is over trowel it. Because if you over trowel it, as I've said a couple times, I'm sure it will bring the lime to the surface and weaken the bond. Okay, guys, I'm going to set up this bucket here, but you see where I'm going with this. Another five minutes I'll have this wall, but in order to uh, not make this too long a video, I'll just show you the the finished product and the burning and hopefully the owner let me do a little bit of the uh, black soap black soap okay guys we're about to take lunch but before we do I've got to finish everything I started um, we're multitasking as usual I'll show you how we this is uh, called buffing it polishing it we're bringing out the highlights if you do it just right you don't need to put a lot of pressure on it. When you come to these joints here, now these are sometimes critical, or they take a little practice. You go sideways, and what I'll do is, 
if it's already starting to hard, I'll just I'll hold my trowel on edge. I'll take it here, and I'll just what we're trying to do is highlight highlight it, buff it, uh, bring out some contrast, and that's how we do that. I'll take the whole corner inside corner and just go across like that. And guys, too, if you get a pinhole or a little piece pulls off, that means you're putting too much pressure. Lighten up on the pressure and just reapply it again. Now, this is what I was showing you folks earlier. Why we tape everything a quarter inch. I'll just, I'm going to pull this off right here because I do have two coats on this already. And so ideally, when I pull this tape off, I want it as close to perfect as I can get it. But even if I get perfection like uh, I've gotten there, I'm, I'm surprised. I didn't expect to get it that perfect, guys. But if we don't, what I'll do is I'll take my handy dandy dollar brush, dip it in some clean water, and just hit that real lightly. And that actually strengthens that corner right there. And if a little bit of color gets on the window, that's okay. We can come back with a rag and clean that. And as I said, we're going to take the side of this brush. This brush opened up finally. When it opens up, it's time for a new one. I have about six or seven more. So just the just sake of, I'll, throw, I'll put that here. Now, the buffing part, we want to go straight up. You can do it. This does take a little bit of pressure. No, you don't have to be the Hulk to do it. Just, just give a little bit of pressure. It's a little bit of elbow grease, not too much. If it starts to set and you wait it too long, well then now you're going to need a lot of a lot of muscle. Then you you take it somewhat like up. Come on now. Say for example, if it starts to set up, then you're going to go ahead and Use your fingers to push it. Use your fingers. But the idea is you don't want to over trowel it. You don't want to over compress it. All we want to do is give the buffing action so that when this dries, it gives that mottled look. It's going to be a variation of light color. So hopefully after lunch we have a few walls left to finish. I have this outer wall to finish. We'll come back and I'd like to see this wall right here dry so I can show you folks the, the um, the look it's really really cool you're gonna love it okay guys we're putting the final touches on this bathroom here's my last tip as far as application guys what i generally do is i'll clean my tape that way when i pull back i mean a minute ago i pulled back that window and it was better than i expected so when i pull back here say for example what i generally want is I want to peel back and I don't want to have to work so hard guys now you see that's that's perfection here I actually double tape everything and I just want to peel back here that gives me a clean line there that's a tip and my last tip as far as applications is if you got a pinhole or you're, you're pressing too much you could put a little bit on your um, plastic float and just go right over it and that'll get them out. I haven't done a job yet where I haven't had a couple pinholes or a little bit hasn't coming off. So that's typical. And again, the owners here, they did their online research or due diligence. They come up with the eco stucco that they chose. Um, I'll tell you guys, all lime products are not created equal. Far from it. So they figure the the cost of the material the benefits far outweigh the cost so we'll leave it at that and because it's not even close to dry uh, Jason is going to come back tomorrow and show you what it looks like so after we end this video just keep watching and he'll show you the color that this is going to turn out it's going to lighten up quite a bit who knows maybe even though the owner might have had some of the black soap on it if you folks like what we do and what we show you folks, click above this video in the subscribe. If you folks have any questions, you might try it and say, dang it, how does Kirk make it look easy? Well, a lot of experience and there's a lot of things here that I can't show. I just showed the majority of tips that I thought were important, guys. If you have any comments or questions, go below this video and just write the comment. If I could answer it, I will. 
Anyhow, folks, Jason and I thank you for watching, and as usual, we'll see you guys on the next one.